everyone. Uh, this is Mary from Rocky Mountain Gardens again, and I am here to talk about two house plants that are wonderful for bringing some blooming flowers into your home during the winter time. So uh, these flowers are done are found on the cyclamen plant, which is uh, an interesting plant, actually. Both of the plants I'm going to be talking about today, the cyclamen and this oxalis plant, are interesting because they bloom in the wintertime and go dormant in the summertime. So it's just perfect for indoor gardens when you would like to have blooms in uh, January, February, March, maybe April, in that time frame after the holidays when, you know, we have our long winters in the mountains and you're waiting to get outside to garden, but you can't. And these two plants provide some winter uh, color interest in your home. So I just wanted to tell you a little bit about cyclamen. Cyclamen uh, has um, flowers and blooms in the winter months and actually goes dormant during the summer. And during this dormant period, it will, you know, of course lose its blooms and start dropping leaves and will look almost dead. At that time, you go ahead and uh, decrease watering, you know, very minimal watering during the summer months. And then um, in autumn, it will start sending out new leaf shoots and will start to prepare for blooming after Christmas. So, and also uh, besides reducing the amount of water on the cyclamen, you should also put it in a little bit of a darker spot in your home. Anyway, this is just a darling plant and has such pretty spring colors. Cyclamens come in whites and varying shades of pinks and reds, so they're quite cheerful. And um, the second plant I'm going to talk about is this oxalis plant which is also known as the shamrock plant. And it gets very small white blooms on the plant. They're pretty tiny, but still cute in the winter time. And because this is known as the shamrock plant because of the leaf shape, it's very cute. Uh, and the other thing that this plant would be wonderful for in uh, March is using it as a table decoration if you're having a St. Patrick's Day party or dinner. But this plant, for example, I have had in my home, I don't know, at least eight years. And it is in a tiny pot. And I do believe it's been root bound for a long time. Now, uh, just before I move on to my next part, I want to say that oxalis, or the shamrock plant, behaves very similarly to cyclamen. It, uh, grows these little white flowers in the winter months, and it also goes dormant in the summer months. And does the same thing as, ox, uh, uh, sorry, the cyclamen. It actually um, loses leaves. You might just have a few leaves left during the summer months, so you can decrease watering, put it in a darker spot in your home. And then in the fall, all of a sudden, it'll start producing more leaves again, and it'll, uh, fill out and be very full and very pretty in your home. Now, because I've had this plant for so many years in my home um, without repotting it, I thought I would do a little demonstration of repotting an existing house plant that you have that maybe has outgrown its pot. So I have it in a ceramic pot here, and I am literally gonna pull it out in this little pot it came in and I'm actually going to put my cyclamen in this pot to put on my table because I just love these cute little flowers for the spring. And this plant, the oxalis, let me move this over here, put the oxalis here, I'm actually going to plant the oxalis in this pot. I'm going to give it a little more room for its roots to grow. And I have seen this in friends' houses, uh, the shamrock plant, where it's in a large pot and it just grows to fit the size of the pot. So I'm going to take uh, some soil from my 
potting soil container here and I am scooping some soil from it into this larger pot. I'm going to turn this to make sure you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to scoop the soil up the edges a little bit to make room. And I'm not exactly sure how much I'm going to need in, to, in this uh, pot for my shamrock plant. So this is a matter of estimation. Um, I can even try setting it in here to see if it kind of works. And I believe this plant will be fairly root bound. You can see the roots coming out of the bottom of the pot. I'm actually going to pull those off, if you can see that. And then I'm going to turn, sort of loosen the pot a little bit and tip it over and ease that out. And here you can see some of these fine roots and I believe these are corms, these uh, larger looking roots, which are similar to the corms that you find on irises outdoors. Okay, so I have a little bit too much potting soil in here because my plant is standing too high up in the pot. So I'm just gonna remove some of the excess here and test it again, see if it fits in there fairly well. And it does, uh, as I said in other videos that I've made, always leave room around the rim of your pot with your uh, building up your soil so that you have room to water the plant in the home. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this extra soil that I had and I'm gonna add it around the edges and fill in, tamp it down a little and I'll get some additional soil from my soil container here and I just push the leaves up and out of the way and fill in around the edges. And I'll do that over here as well. You just go all the way around your pot. Oopsie. And fill in. And it might look a little too full at initially, but that's okay because you want um, to be able to tamp down the potting soil around uh, your, your, uh, the root ball of the oxalis plant. Okay, so I'm tamping it down and also pushing down the root ball of my plant. Make sure it's in there firmly and the roots are all have good contact with the soil. And I'm gonna just check and make sure if I need a little more soil on top added. And if you have any little clumps in your potting soil, you might wanna break them apart. You don't wanna have clumps in there. So this is looking pretty good over here. And this side though, I believe needs some more soil. Just a tiny bit. There we go. And then once again, I'm gonna pull up the leaves, tamp down everything so it's in there firmly, but not packed in so tight that your roots can't breathe. Um, and there you have it. You can remove some of the soil that's around the edges. And then a tip I really wanna share with you is this. One of the downfalls uh, for me has uh, in having houseplants indoors has been my problem with uh, having water overflow onto my wood furniture. And then when it does, of course, you know you have water marks on your wood furniture. So that was always one of my hesitations about having indoor plants. And I just decided to start, uh, you know, you can buy under dishes, but oftentimes, especially if you're using something like this terracotta, terracotta uh, under dishes are porous and the water can seep through and get you know, in your uh, wood where the plant is sitting. 
and then you'll get a ring, a water ring there. So you need to look for, in order to preserve your furniture, you need to look for any kind of an under dish that is glazed. So this actually is just a very inexpensive plate that I found at Walmart. I'm trying to see, I think it was, it was under $2. Next, a really pretty under dish. I like the color, it looks pretty with the terracotta. And so you can set it, put your plant on top, and that glazing on that plate will not allow any water to seep through and protects your wood furniture. So I really like that protection and that idea. Uh, on, as another example, now this cyclamen I have in a pot. This pot has no drainage hole on it at all. So that's a problem too because then your roots can get waterlogged and start rotting. But what I do is I buy one of these little plastic under dishes. I actually had to cut this one down a little bit to make it fit inside the bottom of this pot. I put it in the bottom upside down and then I place my plant on top and that keeps the roots up and elevated if any water drains down uh, through the drainage holes in the pot that the cyclamen came in. Um, the, 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 this pot that the cyclamen came in will not be sitting in that water and that keeps you from developing that root rot problem. And periodically you could check it. Sometimes when I pull my plant out and I take this out, there's actually water sitting in the bottom of this container. So you just go to your sink, dump it out, put your little plastic dish back inside, upside down in your plant on top, and then you do have it protected. So two wonderful plants bloom in the winter, go dormant in the summer, and we don't care about that because in the summertime we're outdoors and enjoying our gardens outdoors. But these are two plants I highly recommend. They're a lot of fun, easy to care for. I just water them once a week well and um, keep, the, you know, keep the soil relatively moist during the, their blooming period in the winter. And that's it, it's easy, easy to take care of. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.